So today I'm going to do a follow-on video from a video that I did early in the week. Early in the week I talked about I was selling a company and I was selling this company for a good amount of profit and I've seen another opportunity that I want to buy and I bought that stock and actually since then I have actually sold that stock so that, that is uh, for me very quick in and out of stock. You guys know me, I normally hold my stocks for many years but for this one I just went this is too cheap I'm going to buy it and I made a little bit of money and then I sold out of it. So I'll talk about why that happened, what I was kind of seeing on this video and I've also got a bit of news today about Walgreens because there was a little bit of a shock a surprise that went on with a bit of news from Walgreens today so hope you enjoyed it if you could hit that like button as always let's get started and if you do want some free shares from trading 212 join through the link in description you can get a free share worth up to 100 pound that's the broker I use and just to let you guys know if you are on the Patreon I just dropped a live Q&A session so if you do want to go watch it the replay is up there it was 40 minutes long uh, if you want to see two exclusive videos a week from me join through the link in description and you can see that exclusive live Q&A session and all the other exclusive videos we do on there but getting on to Walgreens to start with. So Walgreens, a little bit down today. I thought the stock was, it was actually up in pre-market and then it's actually gone down. I thought it would be up today, actually. Um, surprise news coming out from Walgreens is that the CEO, Ros Brewer, is going to step down. She was around in the role for about two years-ish and she was the one brought in to try and turn around the company. Looked like it was going okay, but the last couple of quarters have been a little bit below expectations. Seems like the board went... We're not quite happy with the job that you're doing and it looks like she was jumped uh, before she was pushed. So yeah, obviously clearly um, my feelings around this is that I can understand it. I thought maybe give her a little bit more time because she seems to be doing all right, but obviously the last two quarters were a little bit disappointing. But hey, you know, if they've got someone that potentially they've got lined up that they think they can do a better job, that's absolutely fine. But clearly, um, high standards shown here where they're like, okay, you've had a little bit of poor performance in the last kind of couple of quarters where we want that to improve. But maybe actually since she did come in um, because of the share price performance, maybe that was a big factor and what also wanted the change around. So. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm okay with this news. Uh, a little bit surprised, but I'm okay with this news. Um, so getting on to the stock that I bought and then I sold it. So obviously you guys know I did this video uh, two days ago saying that I sold my shares in Moonpig. Uh, Moonpig was a company that I bought. I covered all this uh, the other day, so I'll keep it nice and brief. Bought, a com bought this company because I, I thought it's just absolutely, not my favorite company, but I was like, this is just crazy low. Uh, and since I bought it, the stock is up and uh, we made really good money on the stock. And uh, then I, when I was considering selling this stock, um, the watches of Switzerland actually went on sale and you guys know me, I'm trying to be a little bit more cautious of my cash and I thought, if I want to buy this dip in watches of Switzerland, how can I get the cash? And I thought, okay, let's move it out from Moonpig and then buy watches of Switzerland. So I did buy watches of Switzerland. And as you can see here, the stock has been on a bit of a downtrend really since 2021, but the big drop that got me in was the other day. And you can see here on Thursday, boom, the shares absolutely tanked on Thursday. And at one point, the stock was actually down 30%. Since then, the stock has rallied out of that little bit of a dip um, and I did buy in that dip. Now, the reason why Watches of Switzerland actually dipped is because, as you can see here, Rolex bought a rival retailer and that's what caused the stock to crash 27%. Now, the worry is, is that Watches of Switzerland obviously sell Rolexes. It makes up a good chunk of their revenue, over half the revenue, and the panic was, well, if Rolex goes and buys a retailer, are they gonna give that retailer maybe the better stock or limit stocks to watches of Switzerland and when that makes up 50% of your revenue, <gasps> panic stations. Everyone panicked and sold the shares off because of those reasons. And I understand it selling off. You know, obviously if you make up half your revenue and they go buy another retailer, you're thinking, oh, th that's really bad when it makes up half our revenue. And that's why the shares did drop in value. Now, what did happen is they actually came out with a statement and they said that they have seen the acquisition of Rolex and uh, potentially going into the retail space. But on this RNS they did, they said that this is not a move into retail by Rolex. There will be no operational involvement by Rolex. Uh, there will be an appointment non-executive board member. And they also said there will be no change in the Rolex process of product allocation or distribution developments as a consequence of this acquisition. So they basically squashed the complete reason why the stock dived 27%. Now, obviously they had to come out with this and it's one of those, it's like, do you actually believe what they're saying here? But what they did say is all above is reviewed and confirmed by the highest level of Rolex management. So the fact that that sentence in there made it a little bit more believable. And I think if, to be fair, if Rolex were going to limit the supply to watches of Switzerland, we probably won't see it in the first kind of year or two years. It'd be probably further down the line. So I thought that kind of relaxes things for the next kind of 
year or two and potentially they don't actually limit the supply to them so i was looking the major issue why this stock just dropped that much isn't really an issue anymore and even if it's going to be an issue further down the line it should be okay in the shorter term so i thought this is just a drop that is a little bit way too much for me that i think it's a, probably a bit of an overreaction and the main reason why it's dropped kind of just got squashed by watches of switzerland rolex i also combined that the fact with that it was a, like it's 11.5 times earnings now. I think it actually dropped to like nine or 10 times earnings when I was picking these shares up. Historically, that's very low below the uh, normal value. It's below the market valuation. And uh, historically as well, it's normally traded around 15 times earnings. So I was thinking it's, you know, relatively low compared to what it normally is now. It's a pretty solid kit company. You know, it's got decent revenue growth. It's had decent profit growth. And I thought this is a pretty solid business here that has just, uh, maybe just obviously the combination of the fact that it's already been beaten up on the share price and then this drop today has just put it to probably a bit too low valuations now i was thinking to myself the only thing is buying watches of switzerland it's not something i want to get into a longer term hold with it as a bit of a turnaround play here and i was thinking well the problem is is that obviously the reason why it's getting crushed at the moment is because the secondhand luxury watch prices are slumping at the moment. The people are worried that the sales of watches of Switzerland have only recently boomed because of the kind of, you know, 2021 boom that we saw, everyone kind of going crazy, everyone having all this free money, and people are a little bit worried. The people are going to be pull, pulling the spending back a little bit going forward. And it is a company that's getting hit by the FX impact a little bit at the moment. So I think that's caused a little bit of panic on the share price. The other thing is if there's an 08 kind of style recession, you know, does that potentially hit, you know, Rolex sales as well? And, you know, is there going to be a recession around the corner? And ultimately, I did look at this company and I think, I don't want to be in this in the longer term because for me personally, I don't have much knowledge in the kind of watch and Rolex space. I've got a little bit of knowledge, but not too much where I know what's going on. I don't know what's kind of going on. I don't know if Rolex prices are holding up, if they're having to drop the prices. I don't really know what's going on in this kind of second-hand market. So it's a, it was a little bit out of my circle of competence a little bit where I went, I don't want this to turn into a longer-term hold because I'm looking at this thinking, I don't really have the knowledge in this space to be ahead of the market. And that's what I think, if, as a retail investor, if you wanna be a successful retail investor, you've got to be buying companies that you have knowledge in the space of, and that will help you outperform Wall Street and other investors. For me, I don't have that knowledge. So I didn't wanna get this into a longer term hold because I didn't have the knowledge on the watch space and I wouldn't know if watches of Switzerland are gonna go through a, a little bit of a slumpy spell because of you know the secondhand market or Rolex sales being poor. But what I did appreciate is that I looked at the news here, I, I, my investor, more finance and numbers hat came on where I went, okay, the situation that there is gonna potentially be Rolex dealing directly with another supplier, limiting su supplies, it is a little bit of an issue, but the RNS came out and said, actually, that's not gonna happen. So that issue was resolved. I looked at it thinking, it's a decent company, profit growth, revenue growth, the recent trading update that they brought out was pretty solid. And I was looking at the valuation going, well, the valuation's on my side because it's normally around 15 times earnings. At the time, obviously it's still 11.5 earnings, which maybe they suggested is probably a little bit more upside, but at the time it went all the way down. So I think it was like nine times earnings when it dropped 27%. And I was like, this is just a little bit too much fear out there, too much fear. And I think a few people come in and buy this dip up. And uh, I was willing and thinking, I'll, I'll be one of those people. And um, yeah, I, like I said, I bought the shares and uh, I rallied it up about 5% and then I sold it out and made a good amount of money. And it wasn't too bad for getting half of the average S&P's return in only three or four days. And I know it's not normal like me to kind of, you know, buy and sell something so quickly, but I just thought this was a, a pretty short term opportunity to buy here. And my video, I said, on, I thought the other day when I did this video and I said, I saw this stock and I'll tell you about what stock it was that I bought a little bit later in the week. When I did buy that stock, I thought I was going to do a complete deep dive into watches of Switzerland and you know, I, I would pro probably hold it for, a, you know, a, maybe one or two months. But the problem is, is that the rally was a little bit bigger than what I thought it was going to be in the next few days. You know, it rallied up a little bit more than what I was expecting. And I thought, you know what, the average S&P's return by ho only holding this stock like two or three days, I said, it's, it's okay that, you know, I, I wanted a little bit of a bounce and I thought I was going to be holding it for more of a 10, 20% bounce over the next coming, you know, three, four, five months. But I thought, you know what, let's just take the profit here. So yeah, a video that, 
isn't normal for me, <laughs> you know, buying a stock and then selling it out very quickly, but I just saw a lot of fear out there and a little bit of an opportunity and uh, the stock had rallied up a bit more than what I thought it was very quickly and I thought, let's take this profit out here. So I know that a few of you guys would be there thinking, well, what was this stock that you bought instead of Moonpig? It was that and then it's gone, I've sold it already and uh, that's now just going into that cash pile that I'm building up. Obviously, you guys know I'm trying to build up around about a 10% cash pile again at the moment. That I've, I've not had a cash pile for about a year and a half because everything's been crazy on sale so um, it works out perfect because one of my aims at the moment is to build up a cash pile and I thought okay you know we've made some money and then it adds a, a good amount into the cash pile so yeah just to follow on from this video so none of you guys are like well what was the stock that I bought that was it watches of Switzerland but unfortunately well I guess not it's, it's not that unfortunate because I made money on it but um, yeah it just seemed to work out very well that I thought I'll just take a, a quick 5% profit on it so anyway I hope you enjoyed the video guys hope you have a great weekend if you could hit the like button that's absolutely amazing and I'll see you all in a bit